Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for our sake became poor, so here I to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. It cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Well, good morning, church. I hope you're having a great Sunday already this morning. Welcome to the Riverton Church of Christ Facebook page, or our virtual church as we've been calling it. Uh, I just want to get started with a few announcements this morning, and then we'll get back into uh, singing together and looking at the Word of God a little bit this morning. If you're watching our stream here on Facebook, I just want to let you know that it is posted to our YouTube channel shortly after we end our, our live experience here on Facebook. So if you know anyone that does not have a Facebook account, feel free and send them over to our website shortly after our stream and they can click on the videos tab and it'll take it to our YouTube page where this lesson and church assembly will be posted just shortly this afternoon or right after our meeting time together. If you haven't got a chance to meet with us on Wednesday nights, we are taking advantage of the platform Zoom, where you all get to meet together as a team, basically, and all have live video feeds and microphone feeds, and we can study the Bible and the Word of God 
uh, like we would do in normal life. So Larry is doing a great job of facilitating us through, through the book of Matthew. We're looking at a chapter every night. But you can join us on Zoom on Wednesdays, and all of that detail and link and information will be on our Facebook page each and every Wednesday before we get started. If you would like, you can uh, still contribute to the church, whether it be um, in person. You can head over to Larry's office. He's still open there and hand it to him in person. Or you can send it to the church's P.O. box there in Riverton. All of that information can be found in the bulletins that are being emailed out. And thank you, Gloria, for doing such an amazing job emailing those all out to everyone and keeping us in the loop and keeping us together through fellowship as a family at the bulletin. If you did look at the bulletin, there is quite a few things that have changed schedule-wise for upcoming events. I noticed on there that the 2020 Casper Youth Rally is now canceled, the Warland uh, Ladies Retreat is now canceled, and then last night I also saw that Yellowstone Bible Camp up in Montana is canceled for the entire season. So there's a lot of things changing with schedules and whatnot here in the future and in the coming months and especially right now. So just go ahead and keep your eyes on the on the bulletin and different events that may be going on as they might be canceled or changed. As for right now, that's all of the announcements I have. Let's go ahead and sing a, a song and we'll be back together for the message here in a moment. Sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again. Sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen. All right, thanks for being here this morning, everybody. I really do appreciate it. I know it's still a little weird to meet in virtual space instead of in person, but it's cool to see all of the fellowship happening in the chat and, and in real life when you can, except for the social distancing uh, situations. Let me start off this morning with a question. Maybe back in the, in the good old days when you could see people in real life, what would you say to people when they asked you, what is this Christianity all about? Maybe if they texted you today, how would you respond to that question? I think many of us would have lots of great answers for that. We'd probably have to think a minute, but we would have lots of great answers about what Christianity is all about and what it's all about to each one of us. I think we'd say things like it's all about hope, it's all about love, the love of Christ. It's all about forgiveness through that love. And probably most importantly, we would share that we are all sinners and Christianity is all about the gift of salvation. It's all about being given eternal life. All of those are totally right. Those are the best answers I think we could ever give when somebody asks, what is Christianity all about? But I think we always seem to forget one answer that is just as important and just as huge as those. I think we also sometimes leave out that our relationship with Christ can be a place 
of peace, of rest, of comfort. That's a way that we can know that our relationship with God, we can breathe in, and we can breathe in in the midst of a world that feels like we're drowning sometimes. It feels like it's so crazy, it's out of our control, and there's nothing we can do. We can find peace and rest and comfort. God gives us that, and how we, we can take that and we can embrace that is we take times of Sabbath with God. We take times of Sabbath with God. I've entitled today's sermon, if you saw it in the bulletin, Breathe, Taking a Modern Day Sabbath. And I, I think Sabbath is a great word, but I think when, when I share it, many of us get a little scared because when I say the word Sabbath, we automatically think of the old law, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. We think of the Sabbath, which is completely and justfully correct. If you want to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20, I'm going to go ahead and cover a little bit of what the Sabbath was. Grab your Bibles, Exodus 20, I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but on the seventh day it's a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that's in them, and then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. The Sabbath. We just read how God established the Sabbath in the Old Testament. And it's based on the fact that he did work six days and create the earth. But then on the seventh day, he gave himself an entire day of rest. Very purposeful. Very much a purposeful command from God, not just one that he had to throw down on paper so he could give his people something to do. No, there was purpose behind it. And God himself showed that the purpose was to rest after all the beneficial work you had done. But I think we are a little afraid of the idea of Sabbath. Today, it's a scary word to us. And I think it's scary because we think of the Sabbath. But instead, for us Christians today, we need to think of a Sabbath. How can we be partaking in a Sabbath with God? Because we no longer have the old command and the old law where we take the Sabbath day, but instead we are going to take a Sabbath between ourselves and the Lord. We know that Jesus came to fulfill the law and when he fulfilled the law, basically he took the principles from the law and the actions they had to do, and he gave us the principles instead of just the commands. We see that with many examples. We have love and we have salvation. All of that comes from the principles. But in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus reflects this. He says, I did, do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So Jesus came not to just get rid of the law, but to fulfill the law so we can have the point. We can now have the purpose, the principle, and we can take it and use it in our daily lives today. So I want to challenge us right now to think of Sabbath, to think of Sabbath as instead of a selected day or a selected time off, we instead think of it as a time with God. But I also want us to challenge ourselves when we think of it as a time off with God, because sometimes in our modern world, we can take a time off and all we do during that time off is we stress and we prepare for the next round of work. Have you ever been on a vacation and the whole time you're there, you're thinking about the work that you need to get started on as soon as you get back. 
Maybe not all of us have that problem. Maybe some of us are easier going than others. But for those of us who like to stress or have to stress, we spend a whole vacation, a whole Sabbath time possibly, thinking about the work we need to be doing. So I encourage you, make sure that if you take Sabbath, take it as a time to breathe. Breathe out all of the stress from this world and breathe in the peace that God gives us. Breathe out and breathe in what God has given us. I think the Sabbath for us today, it's a time of rest where we can come to God and God waits on us like a wait servant. He comes and he prepares and gives to us. Not only that, I think it's a time for us to remember. We can remember all that God has done in our lives and is doing in our lives and how we've changed and we've worked and we've come to Him. We can think back and remember on that. And then we can give thanks. We are given so many blessings in the past and in the present and many more to come in the future. But when we remember, we should give thanks to God for what he's given us. Give thanks to him during this time. And then during a time of Sabbath, we should focus on God's goodness and the deliverance we found in him. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this, we do have salvation. Salvation is one of the greatest things that Christianity can give us. But if we take a time to breathe out the stress of this world, let's breathe in the reflection of, man, God really did save us. He saved me and you, the worst of the sinners. None of us is any better than the other. He saved all of us sinners. Taking time to breathe. Let me share with you a story from Elisha. If you want to grab your Bibles, It's going to be in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19, and I'll be reading verses 4 through 9 here in a moment. But I want to tell you just a little bit about what's taking place right before we read those. See, Elijah in verse chapter 18 and and some of the following verses in 19, some of the first ones, we see the story of him going head to head with the prophets of Baal. Many of you know this story where he's at the altars and they're sending fire from the gods is their whole point. He goes through the whole process of pouring water upon water upon the altar and the Lord God still lights his altar and the God of Baal, nothing happens. So you could say that Elijah comes to this point after working a full day for the Lord He's done a lot of work, productive teaching through actual physical labor. That's what's happening in verse 18. And then we get to chapter 19, starting in verse 4. Read along with me in 1 Kings 19.4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take take away my life. I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and he slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was at his head a cake baked of hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and he drank and he laid down again. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came down again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. So we see here in the beginning verses of 1 Kings 19, we see part of the story of Elisha. 
Now, he was just putting in lots of work for, for God. And then the next thing we see is he is so exhausted that he cries out to the Lord and says, just let me die. I find it interesting because a lot in the Old Testament and throughout the Bible, when people are tired or upset or hungry, they just say, let me die. <laughs> but we know that Elisha here, he's stressed out. He's wore out. And he is really ready to just call it a day. He's tired. And he was working for the Lord. So let me encourage us today that it's okay to be tired when we're working for the Lord. I think many people would, would tell you that if, if you're working for the church and you're working, you know, serving, maybe you're at VBS or you're preparing, maybe you're Gloria making the bulletin, you can get tired from that stuff. And that's okay, because if you're tired, you still need to take an opportunity to let God breathe into you. And that's exactly what is happening here in 1 Kings 19. The verses I just read, Elisha is being breathed into by God. And the last point I just made was that God waits and serves on us. And we can physically see that happening here in this chapter. Seems like God sent down an angel who literally made dinner for Elisha. He gave him food that he desperately needed and water twice so that he can prepare for his journey and continue the Lord's work. And then we can skip some of the story. There's more that happens, but we can skip ahead to verse 19. So 1 Kings 19:19. 19, 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha. And the story continues on. He goes back to work. He departed from the mountain where he was at, and he goes back to work. Because he took the opportunity, or maybe more, was forced to take the opportunity to let God breathe into him, to let God take Sabbath with him. We can be torn down, wore down, and exhausted from our daily lives just like Elijah was here in this story. And it's okay, we are sometimes worn down by doing the work of the Lord. We are busy sharing His gospel and doing His commandments, and we can get tired. But this is where the importance of Sabbath comes in. Have you noticed that maybe I'm talking about Sabbath right now at this time in our world? Because I think we may be given the opportunity to be forced some Sabbath. Maybe this is the opportunity where we sit down and we realize that now is the time we can take some Sabbath. I'm going to share just one principle that I have learned and that has been taught to me of taking Sabbath that I think we can implement because we are all under house arrest right now. This I think what we can do is we can take some solitude. Solitude means just taking some time off, being alone, remove the distractions, and just be you and God. Maybe right now, in the midst of all of this, we should just call it purposeful social distancing. Solitude. We need to take solitude. So how I encourage you to take solitude this week is find a physical space. Find a physical space away from other people, away from your family, where you can be distraction free. But I also want to encourage you to find times of solitude in your normal everyday routine. Find a place, but also find the opportunity to just sit and reflect and talk back and forth with God through your normal routine. I think that might be more challenging when we go back to normal schedules and work life and things like that. But both of those play a huge part in taking some time alone with God. So I want you to think today after we close out, where are some places that I can take solitude? But also, where are, are some times in my daily routine that I can just stop and be alone with God? Remember these principles when you're thinking of times and places.
Solitude, it needs to be intentional. When you take the time, you need to not be distracted and not think of other things, especially in, in our crazy world that we're living in. We have cell phones, we have emails, text messages, we have thoughts in our head. Everything can distract us. We need to be purposeful and make sure we are distracted as little as possible. You're saying, maybe in your head, this seems really boring and lonely. And you're not wrong. But there is a difference between loneliness and solitude. I think loneliness, if you've ever experienced it, like many of us have, loneliness is sad. You're alone and you're sad and you're wallowing in it. That's loneliness. But solitude is the exact opposite of that. Yes, you're still alone, but you're comforted and you're lifted up when you're in solitude. So don't fill a blank time with loneliness, but rather fill it with solitude. Paul Tillich has a quote that I really like. He says, loneliness is to express the pain of being alone. Solitude is to express the joy of being alone. We can take some solitude just like Jesus himself did. I think Jesus is always the person we should look to for our examples in leading the Christian life. Why? Because leading the Christian life is to be more like Jesus. So Jesus took times of solitude, and I think it would be proper for us to follow them ourselves. After he fed the 5,000, he purposely makes time of solitude. That story is in Matthew 14, and in verse 23 it says, And he dismissed the crowds, and he went up on the mountain himself to pray. Jesus does this quite often. We can see in Luke 5.16 him doing the same thing and Mark 1.35. Jesus would go off alone to pray. So you see how maybe some solitude and prayer time with God is the opportunity to be built up by him. I think prayer is a huge factor of times of, of solitude because it really is this idea of breathe. When you pray, you can tell God all of the troubles and the struggles you are facing this week, this day, this moment. But you also take the opportunity to breathe in and see, what is God trying to tell me with those? Solitude is important. And I think we're given more opportunity right now than we have been in a long time. And actually, to God, I'm thankful for that. Hopefully, you can take some times of solitude while we're given it as well. But it's easy to say it's a little harder to do. All of the things I just covered about Sabbath and solitude are kind of hard to implement because of our distractions and our world and everything that we have. So I'm going to give just a few simple steps, and I will post a document up on the Facebook page right after our lesson here this morning. But the steps I want to give are called an examine. And this is a term you may have heard before. It comes from St. Ignatius in the Catholic faith. That's where the name comes from. But the principles are changed with every person that probably gives them. And I've adapted them from a teacher here at Sunset. And I just want to share what this examine might look like for us. Because I think it'll help guide us in some times of solitude. So ask yourself or ponder on some of these questions. Ask yourself, where was God in this moment? Whether it be the day or the week or even just the past few hours, where was God in this moment? What did his presence look like in that situation? And then the hard one for me, where did I leave God out of the situation when I should have had him in? Where did I notice that God was blessing me? Where did I not notice that he was blessing me even when he was? Was I acting on God's strength or on my own strength? 
Was I focused on God's will or my own will? If you work through these questions, you might start to become a little convicted and you might have to do some of that breathing out the stress of the week and the day to God. But don't forget it's also a time to breathe in. So I encourage you to take these steps. Go ahead and transition yourself to be alone with God. That's what we're talking about, about finding a place of solitude that is away from people. Take the shift and move it from daily life to an alone time with God. And then I think the next step is to discern and listen carefully to what God is saying. He might be telling you to examine yourself. He might be sharing with you through those questions I just posed. Or maybe he just wants you to think about what he's done in your life and just be grateful and excited that you're given forgiveness and blessings from him daily. But then we need to take it and put it into action. So that's where these last two steps come in. The last two steps, we start with resolution, which means committing to what I've heard God tell me. See what God's telling us, take it to heart, and put those actions into life. Be convicted and put it into action. And then lastly, when we're putting it into action, let's anticipate what God might be doing. How might God use me now that I am trying to follow what He is telling me? Think about the future. Dream a little bit. If I follow God in the way He's telling me and He's telling me to do this specific action, man, what might that look like here in the future? How might God work in people's lives through me? I think these are just some simple yet challenging questions to ask ourselves when we're thinking about taking a breath, thinking about taking a modern day Sabbath. How might God work in me? How can I take some time of solitude with him? Well, to put it simply, taking time of solitude is simply breathing out all of your anxiety and your worry from the week and the day and breathing in what God wants to share with you. So I hope you can find some times of solitude this week. We're going to go ahead and take communion here as a family in distance, but I've asked Rod to go ahead and lead us in a little communion thought and then a prayer so we can take communion together. Thank you guys. This time in our service, we're going to take the time to clear our mind. This time in our service, we're going to take the
Let's go ahead and pray because of the Lord's Supper video not working. Let's pray together. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this time we just took together. And we took the opportunity to take the bread in remembrance of your Son and the fruit of the vine in remembrance of the blood that he shed and the bread and the flesh that he broke for us. We know that the purpose of that is all to remember that your son made the ultimate sacrifice that was painful, but yet he died on the cross, the most painful death that could ever be experienced, all so that he could die and rise again and give everyone this new life in heaven with him. Eternity can be grasped by us now because of the sacrifice your son made just by following his commands and following him. Thank you for that opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to take in remembrance of him this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You were despised, you were rejected, Lord, those who passed by, even averted their case from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word, but chose to be silent, though you did no wrong. Nor was deceitfulness found in you. Yet by your wounds our salvation has come. Yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high. Jesus, the name above all names. God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high. Jesus, the name above all names. You were despised. You were rejected, Lord, those who passed by. Even averted their case from the side, such was the suffering you bore for us. Led like a lamb, a lamb to the slaughter, you spoke not a word, but chose to be silent, though you did no wrong, nor was deceitfulness found in you. By your wounds our salvation has come, yet by your suffering our freedom is won. For God has highly exalted your name, He has enthroned you on high, Jesus the name above all names. God has highly exalted your name. He has enthroned you on high. Jesus, the name above all names. You were despised. You were rejected, Lord, those who passed by. Even averted their gaze from the side. Such was the suffering you bore for us. All right, I hope everybody got the chance to take communion with your families in your own homes. I, I'm sorry the video didn't work uh, that Rod had prepared for us. We'll make sure and make it work for next week and get it in the video then. But hopefully you got the opportunity either way to partake in communion and fellowship one another with with that opportunity right there. If you have a prayer request, go ahead and leave it in the chat right now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and wait a few moments here and then look at those and we'll pray over them as we close. But I do wanna thank you for watching and listening today. I know this is still different than we're used to when it comes to church assembly, 
but I think it's really cool that we can still show the power of Christ and be the church, be the church online even when we don't get together in our own homes. So go ahead and send some prayer requests in, and I'll go ahead and look at them here as we go ahead and start praying right now. Let's close in prayer this morning. Appreciate you being here. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to get to worship and fellowship together as the body of Christ. We are challenged each and every day with this new life that we all have to live, but we are also given the opportunity to breathe and to take some Sabbath rest with you. And I hope that each one of us is challenged just a little bit to take that this coming week. I want to lift up specifically some people in, in prayer this morning. Lori comments here that her son Randy and all of the other people who might lose their job or be laid off during this time, um, pray. we pray for them this morning. We know that that can be challenging, and if you lose your job, it's really hard to continue living the path. Sandy comments that school is starting for the kiddos in Riverton this week and that that all goes well. I know it's a lot different when it comes to schooling right now. So yeah, pray that that goes well. Larry shares Fred and Charlotte Weber. I know Fred has been in and out of the hospital and and just with health concerns and everything, I want to lift them up so powerfully right now. Same for Charlotte, too, undergoing um, all of the treatment she's going through. We have all of the healthcare workers who are serving and helping people, whether with the virus or just normal everyday things, Lord. I pray that you keep them safe in this crazy time, but also you keep them strong and maybe help some of those people they're serving show them the light of Christ. And as always, Lord, I want to pray for our family and those of us that have children all across the world and the country, Lord. For those that don't know you yet, we want to pray that you might work in their life and show them the light. And those that do love you and know you, Lord, keep them safe and continue them on the path of righteousness. Thank you for this church and this body and everyone who gets to gather this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. This video will be up on YouTube here shortly. And thanks for watching. I'll see you again next week.